In this video, we will look at principal component analysis. So let us start with a motivational quote. So wondrous things can happen if we have the courage to change our perspective just a little bit, if not more. So this is in essence what PCA does. So let us look at an example. Say uh, I ask you what is this particular object. So can you guess what this object is? It is it is not quite visible from this particular angle. But what if you look at it from this particular angle, from the left hand side? Well, let us see. If I rotate this, I see that it is actually a star. So what do we learn from this? Well, if we just change our perspective or our viewing angles, we can very easily gauge the actual information that a particular object has. So this is what PCA does. It tries to find the direction through which it can maximize the amount of variation around the data and can explain the uh, a good amount of information. So let us look at a small example. So if, for example, if I went to five different houses to uh, do a survey and I found that in house one, there was one nose and one neck. In house two, there were two necks, two noses and two necks. Similarly, in house five, there were five noses and five necks. So currently I am needing two different features to capture all the information like 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, etc. But what if we look at it from this particular angle and we draw a line that we draw a new axis basically and we can call it the number of people axis. So what does this number of people axis tell us? Well, it tells us that the house 1 has 1 person, house 2 has 2 people, etc. So you see how easily we have converted this 2 dimensional data into a 1 dimensional data just by cha changing our perspective a little bit. So now let us look at a slightly more complicated example and we'll try to see how PCA actually works behind the scenes. So first we find the centroid of this data set of these two features. Basically X and Y are two features. So Y is not the dependent variable. It is actually just another feature. Just like X, it is another feature in the data set. So how to find the centroid? Well, it is just the mean value of all the X coordinates of all the data points and the mean value of all the y coordinates of all the data points and this is that coordinate x comma y x mean comma y mean okay so now we shift this entire data set in such a manner that this centroid this red dot this lies exactly on the origin without changing the relative direction of any of the data points so in this way we can transport the data set into a state where the centroid is now at the origin okay so now we will draw a particular line or we can or we'll draw actually multiple lines for example this is one line and this is say another line this is the third line so we'll draw multiple lines like this and we'll try to find one of these lines which is maximizing the amount of information that it can capture basically right so how do we find that line first of all imagine that this is one of the contender lines this orange line this is the centroid at 0, 0, and these are the six data points around it. Okay, so we first project all of these points onto this particular line in a perpendicular fashion. So all of these are perpendicular to the line and we calculate the Euclidean distance between this projected point and the origin for each of the six points. And then we square each of those distances and then add up all of them. So we call it the sum of squared distances. Now we will do this for each and every line. For example, for each and every line, we'll calculate the sum of squared distances. And then the line that gives us the maximum value for the sum of squared distances will be called the principal component one. And the corresponding eigenvalue for that particular principal component is nothing but the sum of the squared distances for that particular line divided by the number of data points minus one. So this six is nothing but the number of data points. So this is, this will give us the eigenvalue. So these eigenvalues, they quantify the amount of variation around the line. Now, how do we find the eigenvectors? So once we have found out the line that maximizes the variation around the central point, around the mean, we uh, find out the equation of that line. Okay. So in a 2D space, the equation of the line is 4.05y is equal to 4.38x. So in simplified manner, it is y is equal to 1.08x. What it means is that if you travel one direction, one unit in the x direction, then we are traveling 1.08 in the y direction, 
right? And using Pythagoras theorem, we can calculate the the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle, which comes out to be 1.47. Now we will make sure that this 1.47, this particular vector, is actually one, a unit vector. So we will divide all of these three sides by 1.47. After doing that, the hypotenuse becomes 1 and these two sides are now 0 0.68 and 0 0.73. And don't worry, we'll talk about PC2 also in just a while. So this 0 0.68 and 0 0.73, these two are called the loading scores of PC1 and they show how much importance a particular feature has that has for that particular principal component. So in this case, for example, for principal component 1, we see that it is made up of 0 0.68 units of uh, feature x and 0.73 units of feature y. So feature y is marginally more important than feature x for this principal component. Okay, so we are looking at the higher absolute number. So for example, if this was minus 0.73, then that would have meant that this particular feature has a negative correlation with the principal component. And even then, this was a stronger correlation than the feature x even though this is negative, but we are looking at the absolute numbers. Let us look at a, a few pointers. So the principal components are drawn such that each of them are perpendicular to each other and all of them pass through the origin. So after drawing this PC1, if we want to draw the PC2, now since this is a 2D graph, we have two features X and Y, we'll have two principal components. So the PC2, this will be perpendicular to PC1 and it will also pass through the origin. So for PC2 in this case, it doesn't have any other option but to be this particular line. So the equation of this line is 4.38y is equal to minus 4.05x or y is equal to minus 0.92x. Okay, because this is perpendicular. So the slopes of these two should be, after multiplying the slopes of these two, we should get minus 1. Okay, now the PCs, the principal components are nothing but the linear combinations of the original features. Well, it is nothing but if you see this x axis, this is nothing but y is equal to 0 axis and this y uh, axis, this is nothing but x is equal to 0. Right? So similarly, this particular new axis that we have found or that the PCA has found, this is y is equal to 1.08x and it is a linear combination of x and y, these two features. So if we have five different features, we would have five different principal components and all will be perpendicular to each other, which will also solve the problem of multicollinearity because since all of them are at right angles to each other, they will all be linearly independent. So how would the case with five features work? Well, in five features, we will have five dimensions of the data, right? So we'll have, after drawing the PC1, we'll have four other choices to make the principal component two. And in whichever of those four perpendicular directions, the amount of variation is the maximum that will become the principal component two. And the next, uh, direction will have the next highest amount of variance, etc. So now how to use PCA for dimensionality reduction? Well, for this particular example, if we find the eigenvalues in both the directions, we find that the principal component 1 has an eigenvalue of 8.59 and the principal component 2 has eigenvalue of 0 0.46. So you can see this high number means that a more amount of information is captured in this particular direction this particular PC and a lesser amount of information is captured in this particular direction and hence the principal component value and hence the eigenvalue is smaller. So now if we want to look at the individual contribution of these two uh, eigenvalues, we can just do 8.59 divided by the sum of these two values, which comes out to be 95% almost and 0 0.46 divided by the sum of these two values, which is around 5%. So you can see even if we just neglect the second dimension and if you project all of these points onto this particular axis of PC1 like this, if you just point, uh, draw the projections of all of these points, even then we will have captured 95% of the information and we'll be losing only around 5% of the information. So see if we have a six dimensional data, so we'll have six principal components and the first two principal components, if you see, the first one is explaining 87.8% and the second is explaining 8.5%. So if we add these two, we get 96.34% of the information. So even if we neglect all of these other four principal components and work only with the first two, we'll be having 
96.34 percent of the information with us right so effectively we have cut down our data set from six features to two features without losing much information so that would be all for this lecture so thank you for watching